Wow, the load of poker chips are in. Which means we're going to have a bunch of new customers that uh, want to know how to use this thing. Okay, so I do have my old one sitting here. It's orange. And I do believe that that one is around eight or nine years old. And it works... See the fingernail coming off? Turn it over. Okay. Oh, got a cramp. <laughs> After eight or nine years, it is still actually quite sharp. So my pocket knife, I just took it out of my pocket and I can see a couple of places. Okay, the tip is always, I cut a lot. Of, actually, I was, <laughs> uh, I was actually cutting a bunch of stuff on tile the other day and I knew I'd have to fix it, so I do have to fix it. I mean, the tip is not dull, dull, dull. Okay, but, but it's duller than I would like it to be. So, first of all, people say paper before, paper after. I usually only use paper after. Um, so, anyway, come on. And that, that, that. Alright, so let's see what I carry. I tell people, you know, practice what you preach. Okay, that's not bad. I mean, that's sharp enough. Uh, I'm, I'll probably make it a little bit sharper. We listen. Okay. So that's just how it comes out of my pocket. So what I'm going to do here is... Uh, this is how... You, I, I'll just go through the whole thing as if it were dull. Okay, two corners. There's a 90 degree corner right there. 90 degree corner right there. Just exactly like. That is a 90 degree corner. That is a 90 degree corner. They're actually identical in that sense. Only this is probably six to 10 times harder than the blade and a lot sharper than these corners are. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this little 90 degree corner. I'm going to touch it to the blade. Looks like this on your side. Come up this way. I'll hold still. You position the camera. Uh, I'm shooting for 10 to 15 degrees. I tell people like 12 to 18 degrees. Anywhere in between 12 and 18 do not go above 18 in my opinion. A lot of people say no, they go higher than that. That's okay. But I say no. So then we'll just slide it along the blade like this. I'm going to slow down. It would look like that. You can turn it over and come back this way if you want to, and this way. I do not have the sharpener gripped hard, so it doesn't move. I use this little black jobby here. Some of them don't have that, uh, so it's a little bit more flexible. So when I touch, it can move towards me a little bit before it touches my thumb, which creates a block like that. So when I land on it, it's not a solid. It can actually move a little bit towards me, a little bit springy, just like that, like this. I can come back in here like that, out here. Do the same thing back in there if you want to, out here, like that. Now I'm gonna go around the, the last about eighth to three sixteenths of the radius and off of the point. I always set it down like this come over here my hand is touching the table the countertop my leg whatever it is so it pivots perfectly now it's like a machine working on it I land at the exact same angle bevel degree whatever you want to call it with every touch set it down move it back set it down move it back set it down come out here like that turn it over and do the same thing on this side now, if you'll notice on my knife, I'm, gonna, I'm getting me a pointer here. If you look at my knife, you're gonna see that from the apex to the heel has been worked down flatter and flatter. Part of the reason for that is I work a lot with uh, rough cut lumber, dry lumber, and it's full of slivers and stickers and stuff like that. So. Um, I actually want my little pocket knife good enough to be able to get a hold of a sticker or something. And if I needed to, 
I would just dig out a sticker like that. And you go, wow, geez, you're actually digging a hole in your hand there. Like that. And I would just dig the sticker out, okay? And um, so I keep mine really sharp at the point. And of course, it's not tough. So you don't do things that would require a strong tip on a knife. This little knife does not get used hard, period. I just, it's uh, kind of a favorite pocket uh, old timers up this way. So the knife's actually upside down. And it's really a good little uh, knife. And um, I don't use it for hard things uh, because I don't want to break the tip or put a big nick in it or something like that. So, so then, I'm bringing up off of the table countertop or whatever I had it on. Go along like this, and I'm creating a burr, and I'll talk about that because people tell me without a coarse, medium, and fine uh, stone, you cannot raise the burr on a knife. That is absolutely not true. The six inches between my ears is what causes the burr to get raised on the knife, not the object that I'm using. Uh, and I am going to make a video using a file, okay? So now watch this. No burr, finger slides right off. Now watch what happens. Okay, there's the burr. Now we do this. I'm chasing the burr onto the other side. We do that, no burr, watch this. See how it sticks and makes the knife jerk as it comes back across? Okay, so then I prove that there is a burr. We're gonna do that this, that, this. Now we flip it every pass, touch it super light, and I can see that the very tip of the blade still isn't overly sharp. So let's see what we got now. Oh, and if we go like that, it's sharp. When we do that, it still bites, but not as much. <laughs> I'm actually shaving the, uh, the skin off. <laughs> it's sharp. And that is sharp enough for a little pocket knife. All right, you can take the fingernail off that easy. Little round, pocketable, tungsten carbide, six to ten times harder than the knives. 90 degree corner, 90 degree corner. Put the corner on the blade like that and move the sharpener. So you can go out like that, that. You can come back this way, that way. You can go any direction you want to. Just don't push on it hard enough to really make it bite. And that is how I use this on my pocket knife. Talk to you later.